Today we're going to be going over Microsoft Security and Compliance Manager. This was uh, part of my final project for Microsoft Security and Compliance uh, CIE uh, exam and boot camp, which was a three-week course uh, giving me the ability to demonstrate the entire Microsoft lifecycle as it relates to security and compliance. Great course. I'll be using that as the basis for a series of tech talks working on a perfect uh, security score uh, sometime over the next couple of months. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. But I decided to do Compliance Manager for my final because I run into clients over and over and over again that don't even realize this tool exists. Um, and this tool is in every office tenant. Um, it's a incredible way to track your compliance across all sorts of different controls. Um, and yeah, I really felt there needed to be more awareness about it. So today what we're gonna be doing is going into a deep dive into all of its abilities. Um, Compliance Manager looks a lot like Secure Score. if you've seen the previous tech talks on that. Um, it gives you an intelligence score that looks at your compliance levels based upon a series of controls. Um, and I'll be getting deeper into that, um, but you can see here on the cards how it looks so much like Secure Score in terms of number of controls and then number of controls met. Um, inside, it gives you insights into the actions needed to be taken, and it also allows you to manage workflows throughout your company. Um, so there are a number of different controls that are built right in. Um, you'll probably recognize a few of these. I'm sure everybody's familiar with ISO 27001, um, NIST 800-171, uh, hit in government. Um, there's NIST CSF, um, HIPAA, and FedRAMP moderate. These are the ones we work with the most. Um, now, one thing to know about Compliance Manager is it's not available in GCC High. Um, if you're not a DOD contractor, that probably means nothing to you, uh, but because of the standing access necessary for Compliance Manager to read these controls, it can't work in GCC High. But we do have a way to make it beneficial for those organizations that are planning to move into the Secure Government Community Cloud. So Compliance Manager is built up of, of relationships and pretty much groups and then um, action items. So groups are containers meant to organize your controls. So um, within each assessment, you've got a number of controls which are mapped out from the security and compliance frameworks. So for example, um, ISO 27001, I believe has 538 different controls. Some of those um, are managed by Microsoft and some are managed by the customer. That is uh, called shared responsibility. And as we go into the demonstration, I'll show how those relate. Now, finally, you've got permissions. Now, Compliance Manager is built on role-based access controls um, and you have five different uh, roles that exist within Compliance Manager. Compliance Manager Reader is somebody who doesn't have any access to edit, to manage the assessments, assign um, workflows, they can just look. So that's probably gonna be your overseer, a general manager, a CEO, um, possibly even a CCO, who's just looking down on the process and making sure things are there. Um, a compliance manager contributor is somebody who can be assigned controls in order to meet compliance, and all they can do is edit data. They can't confirm that a test has been complete, they can't uh, finish or close out an assessment, all they can do is upload documents, make notes, and they can also be assigned um, different controls for them to manage and move forward and add that data. Um, a compliance manager assessor is basically your QA. They can go back in, look at the process, and run the tests, confirm that the tests have been completed and whether they were passed or failed. Um, the compliance manager administrator, which is the role that I'll be using today, um, has the ability to manage the assessments, add groups um, as well, as add custom controls. Um, finally, the portal admin can manage all of these user roles. Um, one thing to know is only a global administrator can add or remove a portal admin. So let's just cut right into the demo here. So in order to get to Compliance Manager, you're gonna start out just going to office.com, signing in with one of with an account that has one of those previously mentioned roles. Um, in this case, in this case I'm a global administrator who also has Compliance Manager uh, administrator access. You're gonna go to your admin portal, show all, and now down here in the admin centers, depending on how you're set up, you may not see this right away, you may have to click show more, 
but you just go in here to the Compliance Admin Center, and it gives you this nice overview of your tenant-wide uh, compliance uh, status and standing. Um, here you can see that in this demo tenant, we have ISO 2701, NIST 853, and GDPR in terms of frameworks we must be compliant with. When you look at the total score, these are the number of controls implemented. These are the number of controls that are necessary in order to meet that compliance. And that's an aggregate across these three different con uh, control frameworks. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Again, you've got those suggested uh, actions to take, just like uh, with Secure Score. So this is telling you to look at some of your cloud applications, uh, whether or not they may be compliant or not. Because this is a demo tenant, we don't have uh, anything set up right now with um, Cloud App Security for monitoring applications. This is empty. Shows you the users with the most shared files, um, how many items have retention labels, and I'll get into retention labels in a later tech talk. Um, how many high-risk apps um, are used to access your data? Um, in this case, we just have a demo that's a demo application that's meant to show that off. Um, DLP policy matches, if you've looked at any of our previous tech talks or were present for the tech talks on Azure Information Protection, Cloud App Security, um, these are where there are documents that match the policies that you've established in those platforms. So that can be things like identifying credit cards, um, identifying social security numbers. You can build custom ones if you're managing HIPAA data and you need to be able to recognize when somebody's sharing insurance policy numbers, case numbers, um, or any sort of um, easy to recognize uh, number format. And you can use regular expressions to set those up and make that, makes that really a powerful tool. Um, so here we've got active alerts. These are non-compliant um, files or actions that are happening within your environment. So I'm going to just jump in here really quick and show you what this looks like. So if you click on show more, this is actually going to feed you back into Cloud App Security. So we can open this up and see exactly what the document was, who's sharing it, who it's been shared with, what the severity is. Um, so we can see here, file containing PCI detected in the cloud. PCI, that's referring to PCI DSS, which is your basic credit card um, compliance controls uh, put out by um, DS. I cannot remember <laughs> who the organization is. Generally, if you're processing credit cards at a retail organization, there are things and controls you have to have in place to make sure that credit cards are stored securely. They aren't put into text files. They aren't written down next to cash registers when somebody's taking a phone order. And basically, it's just your employee education as well as how you're processing the data when you're moving those credit cards over. So when we jump into Cloud App Security, and this is a little bit of a tangent, but I want you to see the way that these all work together. You're able to come in and actually see, this is a spreadsheet, Megan Bowen, if you've seen our offboarding uh, tech talk, you know why we fired her. Um, because she's always the one doing this stuff. And we can come right in, and I believe with the global admin, we can view it and we can see, oh, wow, we've got every customer's credit card number in here. Um, so that's something you want to know about. We're probably going to want to talk to Megan about that. We'll fire again, maybe in a later tech talk. Um, but it's just, I think it's really great to see the way that all of these different security and compliance solutions all work together within the Microsoft environment. Um, so to get back to our compliance manager, I'm going to open it up again from here because there's two places you can go, and I'm going to show you that here. So we've got this dashboard, and we can see everything at a glance. Over on the edge, you also have your e-discovery and supervision um, as well as your legal hold uh, tools. Again, that's something out of scope for this discussion, um, again, but very powerful tools. Now, this is where it gets really cool. We're going to go in, and we're going to – Click improve your score. It is free but controlled, so we have to re-identify ourselves here and get that authentication. Let's close the tour. Now, so here what we've got is we've got a series of cards. On these cards, they identify what the group is. We've got a default group that contains all of them right now. I'm going to show how to create a group in a moment. And then we've got the controls that we're trying to meet. So we've got GDPR, NIST 853, ISO 2701, 2013 revision, uh, GDPR in Azure, um, ISO 27018, 
uh, in Azure and then ISO 2701 in Azure. And so you can see that we can um, take controls based upon, <clears throat> pardon me, take controls based upon what the in-scope product is. So let's go ahead and we're gonna add an assessment we're gonna create a new group. Now, as I mentioned before during the uh, initial slides, groups are collections of assessments. The cool thing about groups is they allow you to share controls in between. So let's say there's a control that says that, okay, you have to have this quality of locks on your server doors, and that runs across three different compliance groups. They'll, they'll map together. So if you document and test on one compliance framework, it will register it as complete across all of them but only within a group. So the way to really look at this is, let's say you have annual audits for um, NIST 800-171 and FedRAMP moderate. We'll go ahead and we'll create a control for the specific group. So we'll call this Gov 2019 audit. We do not want to copy any data from existing groups because I want to show you guys how these test plans all work. Now, if you do have existing test plans that have been completed in previous um, audits and within these cards, you can copy them over um, based on test plan, implementation details, and documents. This is handy if you've got SOPs that don't change from year to year. We're going to create next. Now we're going to select a product. Um, as you can see, we've got Azure, Azure Government. Dynamics, Intune, Office 365, and then professional services uh, that can be managed. We're going to do Office 365. We're going to select a certification. Um, since I've been working in it quite a bit, let's do NIST 800-171. Now, again, it's going to give you the warning here that I mentioned earlier. Um, Office 365 GCC high and GCC um, can be configured to be compliant to 800-171, but it's impossible to meet that compliance within the commercial tenant. So it warns you right off the bat um, that you might be in the wrong environment and have the wrong kind of licensing um, if you need to meet this compliance. So we're going to add that to the dashboard. We're going to add another assessment. Use an existing group. We'll do that government 2019 audit. We're going to do Office 365, and we are going to do FedRAMP Moderate. So now down here, you can see the new group, Government 2019 Audit, the product, Office 365, the control framework, NIST 800-171, and FedRAMP Moderate. You've got the date that it was created, the last date modified, and when I was talking earlier about the shared responsibility, here you have your managed actions that you need to meet and then you have the Microsoft Manage Actions. So if, let's go ahead and take a look here at NIST 800-171. Again, it's gonna give you this warning. We can close that out. It is not gonna get rid of this warning because if you wanna be compliant, you have to be in the right environment. Um, so the first tab here, Office 365 in-cloud scope services, this gives you a list of all of the products that are in scope for managing compliance with this particular framework. The Microsoft Managed Controls, and this is where we get into actually looking at the individual controls. So if you've looked at any compliance framework documentation, it's usually organized out into sections that can relate to access control, identity, um, and I'm talking about NIST here specifically. Um, but then within that, you've got the sub areas and have individual controls that need to be met. So the nice thing about Compliance Manager, rather than trying to read through some of these really boring 900-page documents, um, what this does is it gives you a listing of all the controls, gives you your control IDs, titles, real quick description, your compliance score, which is a lot like security score. Um, so this is rated on a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, 1 is very low impact. 8 is very high impact. Gives you the status on if it's implemented, when it was last tested, who it was tested by and the test results. But what's really powerful about this, and we'll look at this more on the customer uh, managed controls, is it gives you the details of how it's managed and implemented in intense detail, gives you the test plan details as well. And in the customer controls, I'll show you where it has the full documentation uh, that's taken directly from the compliance framework. So now that we've seen the Microsoft control here, you can see um, 
that all of these have been assessed. This is one of the powerful things about coming into Office 365 and the Microsoft 365 environment is that these controls, a lot of them maintain to the platform and the infrastructure within Microsoft's data centers. So it's done, it's set up, it's built to be compliant, at least at that fundamental baseline. Now we've got the customer managed controls and just like Secure Score, you can go through, look at the recommended actions. You can see here that we've got this one with a level eight impact, access enforcement, got that little blurb, limit system access to authorized users, processes acting on behalf of authorized users and devices. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and let's see. Here we can look and see what everything is. We can see the Microsoft products that are available to help do this. And we have documentation that shows you how to meet this control. But now we're gonna get into how the workflows work. So implementation details and test plan and management response. This is your place to fill out your information about how you implemented that controls and how you're testing and making sure that those controls are there. Um, in this case, me being a global admin, I don't wanna do this. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to assign this task to another admin. Alan D. Young is another uh, IT admin here within the company. We're gonna give this medium priority and we're gonna wanna send an email notification and just say, Alan, can you upload the compliance docs for this control from last year's audit? And I'll even try to spell correctly on this one. All right, so we assign this to Alan. There we go. And up oh, there is the sound. And I have Alan logged in over here in a separate window. And you'll see here, Alan has just got an email from Compliance Manager. Uh, says that a control has been assigned with medium priority. I'm gonna go ahead and view that action brings him right here back into the uh, service trust portal where he's gonna be able to manage and upload documents. So here you can see, we've got the same control we were just working on, implementation details. Um, managed last year, docs attached. Now, of course, you'll want to be a lot more thorough if you're going to be presenting this to an auditor. Um, but in this case, I'm trying to be brief and save everybody a little bit of time here. Now we're going to click here on Manage Documents. I have a sample already set up here. All right, and right now it's uploading this Excel spreadsheet that has all of the controls in it. That is done. So now when we come in later and manage the documents, we can see that. We're gonna go ahead and set the implementation date. Oh, sorry, we'll do that with the user. We're gonna go ahead and reassign that back to Mod Administrator who assigned it to us keep that priority medium, and then just say done. Right now what we're doing when we assign that back to the administrator, we have workflows where we can see all of the tasks assigned to us as individuals. Um, so this allows the entire organization to manage compliance as it relates to their functional groups and their teams. So we're gonna refresh here and we'll see that it was assigned to Alan. Now it's assigned back to us. We can come in here, see the documents, download those if we want. In this case, implement status, we're gonna change that to implemented. Now, you'll notice that I try to do that as Alan, but Alan didn't actually have the access to set the implementation or do test data. This administration account does. We're gonna set the implementation date for today. We're gonna to set the test date for today, and we're gonna set the test result as passed. Now, when we go back to our main dashboard here, 
and we look at this group, we'll see that we have one out of 48 actions that have been managed and are controlled. Now, when we go back here and hit refresh, you'll notice that we're still working just in this card with the default group. So we still just have that ISO 27001, the NIST 853, and the GDPR. We don't have the new group controls in here. Um, so what we can do is we can add cards. Oh, all the cards are up here, so I've run out of space. Um, we can remove a card. Let's get rid of this one. Add a card. Oh. All right, I have found a shortfall in the demo environment here. Um, it is possible to set up a card that manages within just that compliance group. So finally, um, where I mentioned earlier that it's there is a way to use this as a very handy tool if you are moving in to GCC High where you won't have access to Compliance Manager, um, or if you don't want to use Compliance Manager, but you would just like a simple tool or document in order to manage compliance uh, with your own environment, um, what we can do is we go into the individual control. Since we've started on NIST 800-171, we're going to go back into that, and then we're going to export to Excel. And this takes a minute because what it's going to do is it's going to take all of the controls from within the assessment and put them into an Excel spreadsheet that looks like this. So this is the 2701-2013 controls um, for an earlier demo tenant, um, but it gives you a good view. So it has all the information that you get in that when you drop the uh, More tab down within any of those control cards. And here you can see what the Microsoft control is. Down here are the tabs for Microsoft Managed and Customer Managed Controls. You can see the framework, and then here are the control numbers. Gives you the policies, the description, the compliance score, and then if it's filled out, you get the implementation status and implementation details. Let's minimize this and see if we got it. We did. Let's go ahead and open that one. And I'm going to show you where those controls are then linked into here. Um, this is also handy if you do have to give proof of compliance to, let's say, a government agency, a third-party auditing group. Um, I don't like the way this is formatted, but it's quick enough to fix. So we'll go to Customer Managed. And we've got this one here that you can see it's been implemented. It's got the implementation date and the test date and the test result. It does not, it does have the implementation details as well as a link to those documents. Now, the link to those documents, of course, those are secure within your environment. So if you do send this Excel spreadsheet off to a third party, they're not gonna have access to the documents. So you do have to manage that relationship and manage access based on your own per, uh, personal or corporate um, requirements and guidelines. So with that said, I think that we have covered Compliance Manager. I am hoping there are some questions in here. I am more than willing once we stop recording and take this uh, recording back over to YouTube and open this up for the Q&A. If anybody wants to take a look at specific controls that they may be subject to, I'm more than happy to answer those questions. Um, but for right now, this is the end of the demonstration. Uh, for those of you watching online, Tech Talks are a benefit for Agile IT's clients. Um, it features a demo like the one you just saw, followed by an open Q&A session with engineers and subject matter experts. Um, give us a like and follow down below. And if you're interested in coming to see the Tech Talks live, give us a call and become a client. Um, if you're interested in finding out how uh, Agile IT can manage compliance and security for your organization, visit us at agileit.com and we'd be happy to talk to you. Thanks a lot and have a great day. Thank you.